Hey there YouTubers, it's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. This time we're going to be talking about CAT6A Unshielded Direct Burial or otherwise 10 Gigabit in the Dirt. Anyone that has watched our content for the last year or so knows that we are huge advocates of IDC style terminations. One of the things that you should be aware of when dealing with category 6A cable is that certain types of terminations lend themselves to working best with category 6A, especially if you're pushing the cable from five gigabit and above, or especially 10 gigabit. The best way of terminating this style of cable is to a keystone jack, which represents an IDC style termination. And essentially, you thread the wires of the cable into these slots, and it's a very mechanically stable design. And so you terminate both ends with this type of device, and then you would complete your channel with two patch cords, key being factory terminated, factory tested patch cords. If for some reason you think you can do a direct attach, for example, you want to connect two devices together directly with male plugs, an ideal way of doing that is what's known as a field termination plug. And this is a category rated impedance matching plug that plugs in like a RJ45 would, but it terminates in a much more stable, mechanically speaking, fashion. And it's gonna ensure the best possible performance. However, sometimes these solutions are not quite what you need. Sometimes you need just a more of a slim fit male plug on the end of the cable. And if you find yourself in that situation, well, for example, for like a PoE run from Keystone to where you need a plug and a field termination plug won't actually fit inside of like a camera housing or something, then yes, you would use an RJ45. And in, our, in this particular case, you would want to use our standard load bar RJ45, where the conductors will thread through a load bar and then seat into the plug and it's not a pass-through plug and it's uh, mechanically a little more stable better fit and if you do have to use one of these guys though we recommend using only on this on only one end of the cable and the other end should be something like an idc style termination like this keystone so that's the way to achieve 10 gigabit performance and retain it so we're going to get into how the cable is constructed and talk about some of the merits of the cable so be right back don't go away. A brief overview of the product. It's got a low LLDPE cable jacket, a linear low density polyethylene. That's quite a mouthful. And it's designed to protect this cable not only outdoors from UV, but rain, snow, and also being direct buried because it happens to have water blocking tape inside the cable as well. So it does have a outdoor CMX linear low density polyethylene jacket. So as a result, this cable is above the minimum that you can use to run inside like residential structures. Now I don't mean coming from outside in, I'm talking about you cannot run this cable from outside in more than 50 feet, whether it be commercial or whether it be residential. Because in the, in the case of residential, if this cable was a quarter inch thick or less, then you could use it all throughout your structure. We wouldn't recommend it, but legally speaking, you could do it. But because this cable is above that quarter inch minimum, whether it's commercial or residential, you're gonna be going in up to a maximum of 50 feet before you must terminate your cable. That, that is the code in most areas. Also, we recommend that you use our three-dimensional staggered patch panel if you're gonna be using keystones especially because that helps prevent crosstalk at the connector through alien crosstalk mitigation methods that our 3D staggered unshielded patch panel offers. We recommend you take a strong look at that patch panel because it helps keep up your performance of your cable. As far as length is concerned, because you're gonna be taking this cable outdoors, now you don't have to direct bury it, you can run it above ground. If you're gonna be taking this cable outside, it is going to be subject to temperature extremes. And therefore, there is a temperature chart, which you should reference, which will just give you an idea that as ambient temperatures go up, your lengths that are permitted get shorter. So you should be 
aware that in an outdoor environment that your cable could be subjected to a temperature extremes and may need to be shorter as a result. So please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment below, let us know what you thought about it. And with that, I'm going to say happy networking.